Hi, so uh, today is a talk about the coming up, uh, the upcoming conjunction uh, of Saturn and Pluto that will be taking place in January. Uh, we'll be talking about various other bits and bobs, including some spirituality uh, around that as well. Um, and I'm here today with a, a really much treasured reader for me, uh, Nico from Scarlet Moon. Uh, it's absolutely awesome to have you. Uh, brilliant to work with you. So. Um, with that said, where do you want to kick off with this? Where do you want to start? Well, um, this is, again, it's kind of a, I, I wanted to do a special, you know, sort of combination uh, of you and myself and also, you know, make this available to my, uh, my you know, my Patreon people and your uh, premium subs to also have a bit more of an engaged sort of Q&A exploration of this grand conjunction. And what that actually means, you know, there's a lot of hype around it. Um, what I think that where I would like to start is maybe talk a little bit about uh, what you and I are each going to be respectively bringing to the table. Just, you know, so people who are kind of, you know, in the, in the audience here live watching, as well as, um, I need people. Uh, as well as you know those uh, who are watching this on recording, just kind of get a bit of a, a, a bit of an abstract on what is you know what is going on um, and, and why this is kind of a big deal you know mm. because we're going to be talking about some pretty heady stuff this is this is no joke this is also a, a video we're going to be talking about uh, the Pluto return for the US, which yeah. is, you know, again, we're not gonna get super duper political on this, guys, so save it. No, either, of, either of our styles. Save it, if, if, I don't care, even if it's therapeutic for you to get that way, please save it. Um, <laughs> clear it, clear it, you know, purge it, raise, you know, just get rid of that density. But we're gonna be talking about um, what a Pluto return actually means, mm. because, I feel like it's important to talk about it, even if it is, you know, maybe for one one country. I think it's important because we live in such a co connected global community now. Yeah. One country's Pluto return has a stronger ripple effect, yeah. um, you know, yeah. and it it does affect, you know, more of a global community. And I feel like that is something to have a conversation about. Now, none of us are going to have. Uh, a, a Pluto return in our lifetimes. It takes 240 years, you know, for Pluto to to go around the zodiac. So don't expect to see any how to survive your Pluto return <laughs> energy questions because it's not going to happen. And if you can live that long, then you've probably you know transcended out of a carbon based a few secrets for yeah. sure. <laughs> you probably transitioned out of a few carbon based structures. You'll be fine. But the um, the idea of, of, of that, I think, is also important because this ripple that's going to be kind of coming through, you know, it's happening, at, you know, during the time of the, you know, just following these conjunctions and this huge collective, you know, global shift that we're going through spiritually. And I think it's important to also keep it in the spiritual. So, you know, like I said earlier, when not too much earlier, literally just a few set, you know, minutes ago, where I didn't want to get too political, it's because I think that we have way too um, too much of a focus on shift being something about the mundane, something yeah. about you know the everyday. And I want to talk a little bit more about spiritual shifts, spiritual uh, revelations, you know, collective consciousness kinds of shifts away from the you know. Uh, from the, you know, from the sort of, you know, dare I say, uh, newly initiated sort of, you know, conspiracy jargon and things like that, you know, kind of away from the, 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 the baby shift stuff and, and really stepping into this idea of, okay, well, okay, great. Now that you've had your morning coffee, what are we going to talk about? You know, that mm -hmm. kind of really getting deep in there. So um, I also want to talk a little bit about yeah, what, what these planets all mean, how they could be affecting uh, people personally, though I don't necessarily think all of these are going to have very deep individual personal effects. Mm -hmm. These are all outer planets. These are not, you know, we talk about Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto. These 
outer planet energies don't often do a lot of individual work in transit. They hit groups, karmic groups, soul groups, oversoul groups, again, Cities, principalities. Yeah, 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 villages, all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So it's, all right. it's time for that. Sorry, go ahead. Your turn. You have yeah, to know no, how to shut no, me no, out. No, 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 it's really, really good. So in terms of the conjunction itself, yes, I totally agree. There's been a lot of hype about it. There's been lots of people talking about it. There's been, if we're completely honest, a lot of fear mongering, even some doomsdaying about it uh, because of what it's happened. Well, firstly, because it hasn't happened in our lifetime. I think that's a big part of it. When you look at ancient cultures, uh, when eclipses happened and they hadn't seen them before, it's like, holy shit, you know, the whole world has ended. Excuse me, potty mouth. Um, so the fact that we haven't seen this event before, I think, and especially because of the planets that are involved and the sign that they're in, a lot of people are very much kind of like, oh, okay, well, you know, what is this gonna be? Um, the conjunction itself, a big thing for me, I get this feeling, it's gonna be like a grand rewrite for all of us in some way, shape or form. So you've got these two powerhouse planets coming together in quite a, um, a slow, steady, but also a very intense sign. Capricorn itself is very intense in its nature. Um, uh, oh, it's okay. I was just chatting. That was my bad. I'm sorry, I was being distracting. You said potty mouth and then I had to write in the chat bar. He doesn't know how much I swear. <laughs> um, You'll learn. Yeah, I think for for me, I see it as like a grand rewrite, and these two planets coming together are literally. It's almost like they're saying, you know what? I'm going to give you a rewrite. I'm going to give you a do over. And stay with me here. Some people might think this is a bit too far out there. I kind of get this sense that your collective karma throughout however many times your soul has come into being. Whatever your karma is, this is like them saying, we're going to burn that away from you now. We're going to give you like a brand new, fresh start in some way, shape or form. And I love that because you've got the Pluto aspect of it, which is taking you on the internal level. Yeah. Let's take you as deep as you can and make you really aware of where it is that you're shifting, where it is that you're changing and how you're being purified. And on the Saturnian level, it's like, right, this stuff on the outside is going to have to reflect the stuff that's taking place inside as well. You know, this is, it's going to be a, a, a big event in that respect. And I think, yeah, I kind of get this, this sense that whatever you've been in your previous lives, whatever store of karma you have and whatever house that shows up for, um, you know, in, in your personal chart, that's going to give you an idea of where this is kind of being taken away from you uh, and where you're taking a, a big shift in some way, shape or form. I think that you're right. And I think that if we, if we take a second, also just take, you know, contemplate a little bit about what Capricorn is, right? Capricorn is the structure. It is the, it is authority, but it's also, again, the, the, uh, the structural agreement, as well as the, if we were talking about a movie, let's say the matrix, for instance, yeah. Capricorn would be the um, machine, you know, the mm. computer projecting that matrix, projecting said matrix. Um, Capricorn energy is not bad, right? We're not talking, we're not giving judgment here. We're not, we're not doing that. But just as a metaphor, right? Uh, if let's say every sign had something to do in the matrix there, now it's all fine. Uh, I hope so. But, the, uh, <laughs> but, with, but with Capricorn, Capricorn would be sort of the, um, sort of the structure, right? It would be the very code, the very um, program that is giving density, you know, a, 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 I guess you could say a place in that reality experience for people, that limitation, right? Remember when the first movie where they were going to visit the Oracle and then you saw the kids like bending spoons and whatnot because, mm -hmm. well, they were understanding that that density um, was not really there and it didn't actually have to be there. And that the only reason it was is because people were recreating it with mm -hmm. their collective projection mm -hmm. and acceptance of that reality. So Capricorn, 
is the energy that supports that. Now, when we talk about that kind of support structure going away, um, it's already technically started to crumble. This is actually part of a seven year mark, um, you know, sort of a, a karmic shift from the 2012 original, I guess you could say, shift marker point, uh, spiritually speaking. And so what's happening now is we're kind of getting this second wake up. It's almost like there's another wave of people waking up at this point in time. Now, some of us did not have wake ups, so to speak. And there are a few uh, earlier generations of people. There were the first waivers who were, you know, again, doing a lot of this kind of, you know, tapping in, you know, harmonic convergence type of stuff back in the 60s and the 70s. And in, you know, and then in the 80s, and then we had this other group of people start to show up in the, that's our group, Raphael, the 80s kids, um, especially the 1980 to 1988 group uh, that mm -hmm. also were a big part of this sort of let's move it along. Um, let's kind of, and now we have this other group that's waking up right now. And it's not to say that generations in between, it's not to say like the 70s kids and the 90s kids, that you're skipped. No, but we're just talking about waves of people kind of starting to work on raising the collective vibration. And of course, when you do that, though, you are destroying these external support structures. Um, yeah, so totally. you're, you're eliminating and dissolving these external support structures. And what I notice with the, with, with people, with the collective nowadays, it's kind of like there's this pendulous swing between, um, well, not just two, but maybe a, a several yeah. ideas of a projected sense of security, a cultural agreement, if you will. Um, they're kind of recreating these support structures, but when you destroy Capricorn uh, support structures, what ends up happening is we have this challenge to be like, look, do you know how to create something no one's ever shown you before? Yeah. Do you know how to create something that was not given to you be by your parents or your heritage or your religion or your, you know, again, political background or the neighborhood you grew up in or the TV shows that you watched or, mm -hmm. or the books that you read? Do you have not only the awareness, because I think a lot of people have awareness. A lot of people are woken up. They're, they're, they're intellectually um, aware that there mm -hmm. is a shift going on. But now we're focusing on capacity and yeah. destroying the structures, uh, whether they are self-imposed or not, um, getting rid of these structures that are limiting the capacity of the collective and the individual to shift and to advance on a, a global scale. Because capacity, right, it doesn't matter if you, if you seem to know everything about you know, this conspiracy theory or this spiritual group or this, we're gonna close that up. Um, you know, I'm sorry, um, dear, we don't act, we're not actually doing videos. Um, just give me one sec, uh, I'll, I'll hold on a sec. It's all right, uh, done. Okay, um, so we, we need capacity, right? If we, it doesn't matter how much you intellectually know. It doesn't matter how much, you, how much knowledge you consume or how many um, you know, bits of lore or ideas that you just kind of, again, yeah, you consume, you, you just live on intrigue, right? You live on uh, just the information. If you don't have the capacity to create, then you're still technically dependent on an external support structure to create that reality for you. You're still, in a sense, waiting for Godot. And there's going to be this opportunity now for people to kind of almost see their own power and actually kind of see the, the cause and effect of not only their own energy field, their own, uh, their own work, but the cause and effect, the, the ripple effect, the synchronicities, you know, that time buffer is getting very, very, very thin. Um, you know, and it's, and it's interesting because even I've started to experience a lot of interesting shifts this year uh, I've been working very hard the last few years just to accelerate, you know, myself. It's a lot of people who've been watching my, um, my YouTube channel have been kind of commenting like how much I've been sort of changing, you know, in front and before their eyes, even to the point where it's like, you know, 
I, I, I'm not, I don't seem as, uh, I, I, just, I, I seem like the same, only way older. <laughs> and the thing is, is um, I've been noticing for myself a bit of a change in how time is so fluid for me. Everything can be made or reversed in 72 hours. It's a very interesting, very present way to live. And I think, I think a lot of people are going to have that. that as well. Yeah, for sure. I think this is one of the things that I've tried to cautious, not cautious, caution people on recently is to be aware of what you're thinking, be aware of really what you're consuming. You know, we say this stuff to people all the time, right? It's good to be that aware in a time where, like you said, time itself is starting to speed up and slow down and pockets of it are starting to affect life in different ways. Literally, people are manifesting faster than ever. Uh, and sometimes, if, especially if this stuff is unconscious, <clears throat> you're going to, again, perpetuate a lot of the stuff that you've already had. This goes back to this whole idea of Capricorn breaking down the structure that we're in. I really like that you said that because it's true. If you're continually perpetuating something, even if it is subconscious, when the external version of that reality starts to break down, you're in a moment of, holy crap, what do I do now? Because I don't have a, a bank of experience that I can bank Capricornian word. <laughs> you know, I don't have a bank of experience to go into that I can start to create from. Uh, so it's really interesting that you mentioned that. Creativity is a big one. Um, and I think when you're truly aligned with your spiritual self and your spiritual path, you understand that idea that I am a shard of the creator. And knowing that creative power within myself is really going to switch things on for me so that I'm creating more of what I choose to have yes. rather than what is shoved down my throat from, you know, A, B and C. And there's nothing to say that there's anything wrong with you wanting to create something that you've seen. As long as you're creating it from a space of, you know, core self-realization and true, genuine, again, capacity to feel that vibration and, and, and live it healthily and happily for all concerned, go for it. If you want the white picket fence, right, or if you want whatever, or whatever the British equivalent is, uh, or <laughs> whatever, you go for it. You go for it. It's, it's not for me but it might be for you and that's but the thing is we're also kind of learning again if you again i don't want to get super duper like you know political on this because it's just going to invite the crazies but um the no one else can do it for you no matter who you're calling on right yeah. don't these people are not messiahs and there's there's sort of a situation here where if you really stop and look and see you know you get off the metaphor that we ha that we have for our fourth dimension the internet you know and you you kind of look and you go to nothing it has has this person changed anything in your life no you're the one who changes things in your own life you're the one who manifests and creates everything now if you know you wholeheartedly want something and you are you know how to match that vibration and you can get into the align into alignment with what you are trying to create down to, you know, again, the very feeling as though it's already in your life. Do, are you eligible for what you want? It's the question to ask yourself. It's it, um, uh, somebody who I consider to be a bit of a mentor and a role model. Uh, her name is Sandra Walter. You should check her out. It's, she's yeah. really deep into this ascension, uh, ascension path uh, work. She's awesome she kind of refers to this idea as uh, self-judgment day. And it's not about judgment of good and bad, right and wrong, but it is kind of like, look, I have to take some serious hard looks at myself and go, time for the clearing. Am I eligible for the experience I want to create? What am I trying to bring in? Um, I was doing the horoscopes for Libras uh, this last, weekend and i remember i think i was talking to you i, I used the quote i talked to you because it was actually the same cards and i was basically saying um you know you can't sneak drugs into heaven you can't sneak crack into the summerlands and it's we all have these things within ourselves to to look at and it's not about light dark good evil um anything along those lines but it's a different way it's a different perspective and it's not about being in alignment with a force. It's about being in alignment with your creation. Mm -hmm. It's not about being in alignment with a group or a faction. It's about being in alignment with your creation. And I think that we've become so dependent 
yeah. on seeing something we want to see happen in the external so that we believe something like that could happen. I need to know that this person was able to pull off that job or that marriage or that condition with their health or reach that level in their spiritual practice. And because we've got this, you know, again, this structure, very mm -hmm. Capricornian in, in, in a very, a low vibe Capricornian type of energy, yeah. Uh, where a lot of our inf our imagination, our capacity to create, our capacity to imagine anything else um, has been sort of spent away, um, whether it's emotionally spent away or physically spent away or uh, all of that kind of stuff. And I don't want to talk about it in a dour way because I don't want people to start feeling sorry for themselves. It's just time to, to shift our focus. You know, yeah. that's where we yeah. are. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, and... Go ahead. Please, please. No, no, shut me up. <laughs> no, no, I, I totally agree with you. And I think that's one of the reasons I've tried to get people uh, or tried to put into the content that I've put out is be conscious of what you're creating. And it's very true. If you're a, a match for it in your vibration and in your alignment, uh, it can but move to you, right? That's the whole point of it. Um, one thing that you always mention that I absolutely love is uh, it's not just about the getting, just like the transits of astrology. It's not just a one-time event. It has an energy that it imprints into your life that you're going to have to continue with. Um, so if you can't sustain that vibration, you can get to the event, but once it's kind of gone and you dip down in your energy or in your thought process, it's going to find its way sort of, like you said, petering off or disappearing in some way. Yeah. Um, it's interesting as well to go back to what you said earlier about the, the pockets and the waves. I kind of saw this about, you know, like people talk about indigos and star seeds and I kind of, the, the feeling that I always got from that is they were delivered to like, almost like thrown out in a net mm -hmm. so that they start to make sort of shifts on a small level in, in their families, in their smaller communities. And before you know it, it starts to build this sort of momentum that path like, watchers do to the ecosystem. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And then you start to head towards that whole thing of critical mass, you know, like they talk about in the Celestine prophecy, mm -hmm. uh, very, very much so. Um, and I think this is a big part of the coming conjunction as well. I really do believe the people that have done the work uh, internally, for some people, it might have been a physical slog, you know, whatever that means to you. The people that have done the work are going to be the ones that you see uh, coming up, or you're going to see these are people that are going to be in more prominence. Uh, why? Because they're creating that new vibe that we're shifting towards. I mean, when you think about astrology, uh, Capricorn is, is one sign. We mm -hmm. then shift on into Aquarius. So it's kind of like that's where we're heading, but we need to factor in that this stuff here and now has to go through a change. Well, I think that it might not even be so much about prominence anymore. To be perfectly honest, I, I, I you know, I, this is going to sound awful, but I, I like the idea of maybe a time where spiritual awakeners and i mean i have no interest in awakening people that's not my gig my gig is to kind of work with people that are already kind of like okay you know i've i've gone from you know i'm, I'm trying to move from one area to another but we're already kind of in the same space that's just how i vibe and i'm not saying that to you know that's just how i kind of do maybe that's just where i've kind of moved in my life but i kind of like the idea that um at some point in time we just won't need anyone to do that anymore you know, and that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that role is completely obsolete. I would like that. Um, the, cause, cause for me, I feel we are in a space where, um, a lot of people, I think it's easier for people to wake up. I think it's easier for people to have those moments now, uh, for those of us that have been practicing for longer, you know, um, I mean, I didn't, obviously I didn't start my business back in 1997 cause I was, you know, 12. But, um, <laughs> but that's when I started, you know, really kind of delving into these studies of meditation and my spiritual abilities, my spiritual gifts. And um, that's where I started having my own sort of awakening experiences. But I went through these sort of trials by fire. You know, you didn't have the internet back then. I mean, it's not like I had like a life-changing experience that prompted it to happen. It just kind of like, you know, it's always been there my whole life. 
Um, but it was definitely like a slower progression, a slower level up. There were more experience points required between each level in the leveling system uh, than there are now. And I think that that is also getting even slimmer as we go into 2020. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's actually a really good thing. And I think that that's making it easier for people to sort of, you know, shake off the density of that, you know, 3, 4D replicated experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that with Capricorn's grand conjunction, what's happening is that we have another big end. And I'm curious as what sort of um, metaphor, uh, what, what kind of metaphor for, for the fifth dimension we're gonna have coming very soon. Um, sorry to segue like this, but I've kind of noticed every time we transcend the earth itself, not the individual, because again, people are on their own journeys, they're going to go as fast or as slow as they will. But as far as the collective is concerned, you know, um, I, I've noticed there's always like a bit of a, a big level up or a big gateway point whenever, again, the earth is ready to move on. Like the earth is not... The, the earth supports fifth and sixth dimensional energy at this point in time. That's what the 20, you know, that's what 2012 is all about. It's not just earth, the 3D land. Like the 3D yeah. land is there because yeah. the collective is replicating it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, our first metaphor for transcending that, that 3D, con you know, uh, consciousness actually happened a long time ago. That was actually with the, uh, the cracking of the human genome. And then that was like our graduation prize, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have the, our graduation prize for, you know, for passing through now. So now we have that, right? It's, it's now sort of in our control. It's in our, or at least within our, it's observable to us in the physical. That happened again with the fourth dimension with the internet. I mean, when you think about the, you know, what is 4D? It's the astral. That's where all the thought forms, positive, negative, um, you know, good spirits or what we might call evil, negative, you know, spirits and, you know, the demonic. That's where those all are, right? Fourth dimension. Have you been to the internet recently? You know, <laughs> it's all there. I always ask people, what are you writing down? Don't ground this into the internet. Be mindful of these dog piles and things like that. On You know, what thought forms are there? Like you're playing you're above 4D now, you're not beneath it. And, you know, just keep in mind that this is, you know, so I'm curious what's happening next. And I hope I'm not like, just mm -hmm. going, you, you have to stop me. Spiraling out like that. It's brilliant. <laughs> I think in, in order to see that, like where we go, I think we need to look really at the conjunction. Yes. Oh yes. Or, Thank you for bringing me back to the point. Yeah, no, 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 no. That, and that's <laughs> great. I mean, I think, so, Pluto comes into uh, Capricorn in 2008, right? And I, the way that I kind of see that energy, it's almost like the auditor steps into the building and he's like, no, 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 you guys do what you're doing. You know, Pluto is in secret. He's just there, you know, taking notes, looking at everything, right? I want to know everything from the top down, you know, from the, from the peak right through to the bottom. And when he goes in there, he's, you know, literally checking everything, pulling up the carpets, like he wants to know all of it. And through doing so, what he does is pull up everything, all of the stuff that is uh, locked in. I mean, when you think about Capricorn as well, like it's very, you know, rigid in that respect. So ultimately this is like a cracking of those foundations one of the ways that I kind of see this whole thing with Pluto and Capricorn is, and stay with me, because this is, again, might be a bit out there. They just survived um, this last five minutes with me. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it's almost like, so when you think about plutonium, right? It's a very toxic uh, substance. Uh, but when you crack that open and you split it, what happens? A phenomenon, a phenomenal amount of energy is released, right? And I kind of see this as being exactly the same way. It's going in to crack something open to literally pull out from it. So although you've got this, and I say quote unquote, toxic substance, because karma, uh, you know, that's ruled by Pluto, isn't necessarily toxic. It isn't necessarily all bad because you can have good karma as well but it is certainly pulling up the stuff that is dense, that, like, you know, like you said, the stuff that really needs to be looked at, the stuff that needs to be evolved. And because this is happening, you know, wherever it's happening in your chart, this is kind of cracking open 
that inner plutonium that you have to say, right, you know what, look at all of this. This is untapped potential, it's untapped resources, it's currently in a rigid form that's probably not doing you any good at this moment. If we can crack it open, then you can start to access this phoenix rising from the ashes sort of energy. Right. Well, and I think that that's, um, I think, no, I think that you're absolutely, well, when, when Pluto and when Saturn come together, they're sort of like, I guess, to me, I see this as, it's an agreement. Now, mm. it might not look like an agreement because it's, it, again, we have these really hardcore essences here. And let's be honest, like a lot of people, when it comes to astrology, they are made very nervous, you know, by Pluto and by Saturn because yeah. they're seen as these horrible external forces. They're not, they're actually part of you. You're connected to all of it, you know, just think of, it as, think of them as organs as part of your bigger body. And, you know, they're coming together as in an agreement where these forces are now like, okay, this was, you know, pre-agreed at this time, you know, because again, it's all very much, you know, uh, once you get out of time and space and all of that, it's sort of like, it's, it's all moment to moment, but it was pre-agreed at this now moment um, that this, th this shift is going to kind of amp up um, in, in a way where instead of sort of doing the slowing down for the, instead of going at the pace of the slower, we are not going to catch up to the fastest, but we are going to catch up somehow yeah in a certain way and i think that because saturn is also about you know saturn is sort of like it's the fence right it's the it's the it's it's not necessarily a barrier but it's containment it's boundaries yes i think this is all about veils mm -hmm. um perceptual veils uh the the veils and when i say veils and i'm gonna be making a video on veils here pretty soon i don't mean veils like in terms of metaphors for, again, uh, conspiracies and blah, 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 blah. Like that's already happening. That's been going on forever. Like that's not new. Um, that's, that's not, those veils are already down. It's just nobody's looking. There's a difference between that and, you know. <laughs> I like that. They're um, already down, that, but no that, one's looking. Yeah, like that's, that's just old hat. Like if anyone's trying to do that now, they've missed that, they've missed that part. Uh, I mean, no, no, no judgment on whoever's there. Like if, if you're at that stage, you're at that stage. But um, the... I'm talking about perceptual veils. Um, mm. I'm talking about people, I mean, when we think about the metaphors for that already going on, mm. we are seeing new types of particles. Um, you know, in just less than 10 years, we had the Higgs boson particle, finally understood for what it was, or at least observed for what it was. And we've got new light particles and new light waves also being explored. Uh, we're seeing, you know, uh, black holes behaving differently. Uh, we're also starting to see how human consciousness, again, affects not only its own body, but its own DNA. We're seeing what is happening when it comes to all of this. And the, so perceptual veils, we're seeing things that um, are suddenly getting a bit more wavy. We're starting to see things that are a bit more spiritual. This is now getting into the, you know, okay, so all of you, you know, shamans and witches and, uh, you know, conjurers and all of that out there, this is, this is going to be your decade, right? Because this is all about people starting to see more of these things with the naked eye. All right. Yeah. That that which might have only been available to people who were, you know, do, you know, rocking the third eye stuff or maybe um, taking some kind of medicinal help with that. I don't think that those are going to necessarily be, um, uh, you know, a necessary assistance anymore uh, or people who get into these altered states. I think that the entire planet is actually going through an altered state. Um, which is why I think that there's something going on. I think even in terms of collective psychology, there's kind of an altered state going on. I think we're all, we're all a little bit high right now, if that makes sense. Um, I mean, I'm not, by the way, this is nicotine. I can't do the, I, I can't, yeah. I can't puff no, on the stuff. Totally I know crazy. Hmm? <laughs> it makes total sense. Um, I, I think I definitely agree with you on that. And, you know, this whole thing about what you were saying about veils, uh, very much so being able to see the things that you can feel, yeah. being able to actually experience them with ease. I, I've noticed this with dreams for sure. 
they've I mean I've always dreamt in in you know full color and smell and taste and everything but lately they've just been I'm like okay <laughs> you know it's 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 really taking on a different energy and I like what you said about the the fence with the the satin thing I think it really is a part of that because remember Saturn's just come home right so he's done his whole 29 year cycle he's come back into Capricorn Pluto's already been there kind of you know pulling stuff up and disheveling the dirt and changing things so to speak uh, and he comes in and says right okay well somebody's trashed my house <laughs> or, you know, like you've been here doing all of this work but what he informs that you know Saturn of is look this is the stuff that needs to change and because Pluto for me is that spiritual essence it is that sort of really deeper stuff the the Saturn aspect of it the 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 structures so to speak need to change they need to start to to marry the spiritual with the tangible uh, where you start to get like you said more of the wave rather than the solid well, I don't think that we necessarily have to marry them ourselves. I mean, it's important to be able to keep yourself open. Mm -hmm. I think it's different. Again, it's, it's sort of like when people talk about this shift, right? People might still be thinking in a, in a, in a sort of pseudo dualistic perspective um, where it's, I'm here and that's over there. Mm. I'm where I am and the next level of consciousness or the next dimension or the next um, whatever is over there. No, it's not. It's already in you. We're just kind of clearing what's in the way. It's kind of like closing a window on your computer. If I close the window on this Zoom, which I won't because it'll kick me out, um, <laughs> I'll see my desktop. Mm. it's different it's all there the desktop isn't not there because i'm looking at this yeah absolutely you know? and so yeah, it's yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, it, so we're just kind of clearing the stuff out of the way you know the veil between this world and the next is thinner than a maple leaf uh you know that's you know that that's you know that quote is very much the truth now what do we do about that veil well you know it's already getting perforated right now um a lot of these higher energies that are kind of coming in. Again, I think that now that we're seeing a lot of planets within our solar system start to participate in that experience and a lot of people starting to participate in this experience, not just people, but also spiritual influences kind of like, all right, we're just shutting it down. It's not an apocalypse. It's, it's not going to be that, you know, we, I think we have to stop thinking about this as what does this mean? What does this mean for, you know, um, the dollar? <laughs> or for Britain, or for, you know, or for what? I think we have to stop thinking about that for a second. Start thinking about you. Start thinking about what does that mean for you? What does that mean for your ability and your capacity? And what does that mean for what's going on? Yes, not only in the house that, you know, Capricorn rules in your chart. Funny enough, we've been talking about me moving. Um, rules, Saturn rules my fourth. Right. Um, so I'm kind of like, all right. <laughs> no, I've, um, I was actually thinking, it's funny, um, as we were talking about veils, I was going to talk about, you know, just an example for people. Because again, I know we, 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 I think examples help, but again, don't, don't rely on what you're hearing from the external to give you context into your reality. You mm -hmm. know, that, otherwise we're going to just create another religion and we're not trying to do that. You know, mm -hmm. we, we don't need religion anymore. You know, there's a difference between religion and faith. There's a difference between spirituality and religion. There's a difference between your connection to the people and your connection to your, you know, your highest, you know, collective source, you know, self, God, mm -hmm. and God, <laughs> all of that. So um, there's, um, yes, I am always moving. Thank you. I'm highly caffeinated. Um, oh, no, she's talking about moving, relocating. Uh, no, um, she's right. I am. Um, you try having four lunar eclipses in your fourth house in three years and not move. That's, Go that's, and do it. I want that for you, lady. No. Uh, <laughs> every time it's gotten better. Every time it's like gotten cheaper and bigger and it's just weird. But yeah, it's... it's yeah, the next one's going to be a big one for you, though. I think so as well. 
Yeah, you know, just we, we that, that, about that. this is going to be, it's going to be big, big. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, I kind of feel like this is what the Mercury retrograde season has been about. Because it's been in Pluto's ruling sign, right, of Scorpio. Mm -hmm. So I kind of feel like this retrograde has highlighted to us, the Mercury retrograde, you know, your conscious thoughts, um, has kind of said to you, right, well, this is what needs to go. This is how things are likely to go. What is it that you're holding on to or is too rigid in order to survive what is coming up? And I don't say that to be like a fear monger or a doomsday. I say that because if you're aware of it, you can totally go into this like ahead of the wave with your surfboard. Like, let's fucking go. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I'm ready because I know what's going to come. And this is the whole thing about knowing where it's happening in your houses um, is why it's important because you can ride that energy as opposed to having it ride you. Yes. You know, and I think that's going to be really, really important. And, you know, where the, the doomsdayer and the fear mongering stuff comes in, it's because they're, you know, they are bigger planets, but they are slow moving. I don't feel like this is going to be an overnight thing at all. I think 2020 is going to be. I might want it to be. Yeah. I'll make it so. <laughs> yeah. In my experience, I'll make it happen for me. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. And that's you making it happen through riding your own way of it which is brilliant i kind of feel like 2020 is going to be a very foundational year in that respect i think a lot of people are going to wake up to what they can build uh, i think a lot of people are going to be waking up to the fact that they can build and actually i don't need a scaffold that's provided by right all of that right i can just do this and i think that that comes from Again, I think that if we can take our inspiration, right? I mean, it's, it's okay to work with inspiration, the things that you want. Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay to take the things that actually resonate with you. Nobody's saying you can't do something because you liked what you saw in that book or you like what you saw on that holiday or, on that, or in that film. Nobody's saying that you can't do that. But it has to touch a core part of you because otherwise you don't, you, you won't be able to get into alignment with it. If you're just doing it because somebody said it was important or you're doing it because once upon a time your parents said it was essential in the only way or you did it because this person said it or that person said it or, you know, there's, we, because I think that collectively, especially I think in the last, I'm going to say, uh, probably since about the, towards the end of 2015, um, September, October 2015, when mm. it sort of, a, a lot of the collective started going through this, um, this massive clearing, and you know how clearing works, right? You know how, um, you know how healing crises can work, and why some people get through them and why some people don't. Right, a healing crisis, or again, it's the awakening crisis. How many stories have you heard about somebody saying, "I opened my third eye, and then I freaked out, and now I hate, and now I hate spirituality." The 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 reason for that, you laugh, but you know. yeah. So I'm not laughing to to be mean. I was just, <laughs> just, I've heard a few of those, and you know, people get really, really into this idea that they've broken it. And that's really not the case. Like if you, if it's like anything, if you can ride that uncomfortable, what you find on the end of it or on the other side of it, so beautiful. Well, I think that, I think that we have to look and see, you know, a lot of people are going through this, right? We're going, we're, we're all getting dosed more and more and more um, with all of these higher vibrational energies and we're getting this flush and what, you know, what do they say? I'll let you type. Sorry. No, you're fine. No, you're fine. I'm teasing. I was just like, what's going on? You look, you look serious. So I just want to... Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, um, the, uh, when people have these sort of moments and they kind of realize like, oh my gosh, this is not the type of therapeutic I am conditioned to expect from a therapeutic experience. Um, sometimes we don't follow through and it doesn't have to be a third eye experience, right? It can be just a regular healing experience. Um, it could be a meditative experience, a guided meditation experience, whatever. And sometimes it brings up something unpleasant that needs to be processed and cleared. But I think, again, we are dealing with a situation where um, the last seven years, you know, um, 
2012 until now, the, the shift in consciousness has kind of been, again, it's been amplified and sped up by the people and, and the, 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 the people and the, the, I guess you could say the, the levels of beings, the populations of beings that, again, uh, critical mass, that's sort of been holding and pushing for this higher trajectory. But it's been going at a, it's been con not necessarily controlled, but let's say it's, it's been going at a, spa at a pace that is um, providing at least what allowable ease is there for um, those who are going at the slowest pace. I'll leave it at that. Okay. Yeah. Jupiter getting involved in this conjunction. See what I did there? I brought back yeah. astrology, everyone. I, mean, I had this thought, like, where is he talking about astrology? We are talking about astrology. Um, I think Jupiter, though, and that solar eclipse, but most importantly, Jupiter, um, might be taking the, 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 the level of, the, I guess you could say, the pace and amping mm -hmm. it up. And I kind of feel like, again, people like you and people like uh, me and, and people who are already out there, you know, I, I think that if, if it's so behooves us, we need to start helping people kind of understand these processes better and in a weird way kind of karmically do a better job. And I'm not saying this to, to put myself yeah. down or put you down or right. anybody in the spiritual community because one of the most, and this is my, my thought, and I hope nobody takes it personally here, one of, I think, the most um, damaging uh, things that's kind of happened, I think, in this whole shift in consciousness, ascension, new agey kind of movement, especially, again, going between about 2000, this is before I even got on YouTube, before you got on YouTube, but uh, 2008 to about 2012, and a lot of that stuff was really starting to rev, 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 is that it was, um, it, it, it only focused on providing uh, the, the, I guess you could say the more medicinal experience as opposed to the instructional, as, as opposed to the informational, as, as well as the, uh, it, you know, just, just something informative, right? It can't always be about a therapeutic experience. And sometimes therapy, uh, like physical therapy, can be very painful and can be very difficult. But if a person goes into it misinformed, or again, it's being adopted to accommodate things like um, uh, religious conditioning, or it's yeah. been modeled to, uh, yeah, I guess be compatible with religious conditioning in such a framework that it does not actually prepare people for what they're going through. We're, uh, we are going to see people's vibrations raise. Um, yes. People are getting more powerful. People are getting more empowered. But at the same time, we are going to see um, need <laughs> for people who are in that space to also help kind of, you know, not just unravel the external structures, but help people understand where to unravel the internal structures. Yes, yeah. um, for sure. I totally agree with you. I think it's very, very important. Hmm. Uh, I use the terms love and light all the time because I believe that the world can always use more of them. Yes. That doesn't mean that I'm not fully aware that the experience you have is not always going to be that. If you're going to step onto your path, right, which you're already on anyway, and you're going to open yourself up to this work, it's true with a healing crisis. I used to, I used to work as a massage therapist actually. So loads yeah. of people would come to me and like literally the day after they'd be like, it's worse what you've done is made me worse. Then they'd message me the day after that and say, I could do cartwheels. I can run up the stairs, you know, I could do all sorts because they're not aware. Like you said, and I think even if you make people aware of what a healing crisis is, everybody kind of thinks right, or they have done in the past, it's unfair for me to pass that and it's not a judgment, but we've kind of seen a lot of this with the new age movement. Uh, people are like, oh, you know, and if, as long as you do this and you start to get into manifesting and crystals and stuff, what they don't expect is the work you have to do in between now and that manifesting stuff, uh, is going to require you to clear away some of this stuff, the density. So your healing crisis comes from an internal level where you see maybe things that aren't so pretty, maybe things that aren't necessarily so easy to traverse. 
uh, if you can allow that to take place, as I said, on the other side of it, you find this true beauty and you also find a trust in yourself and the processes that you go through to understand, okay, that was just me shedding one aspect of myself. And now that I've done so, not only am I clearer, but I'm purer. To bring this back into the Jupiter aspect of this, um, I, I love that you mentioned that as well, because Jupiter's got, you know, he's got that protective sort of vibe and he comes to kind of say, right, okay, what are we looking at here? I think this is like, a, and you mentioned the eclipse, the lunar eclipse that's taking place on the 10th of January, you can see that in a big way. Yeah. Right? Taking place in Cancer. Opposite Pluto. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, you know, when you see that as well, when you look at the chart, um, what really astounded me, I was like, wow. So you've got, let you know, I call her Luna. You know, I call the moon Luna, goddess sure. Luna. I call her Gaia. Yeah, yeah, I've got a big love for Luna. And she's kind of sat, sat there in Cancer, right? She's full, but she's also eclipsed. And she's facing off with the conjunction that's taking place, right? Because it's kind of already there by that point. It's only two or three days later that it's like really exact. She's facing off against the sun that's in Capricorn. Mercury's in there as well. Uh, for, you know, for good measure, there's like this massive uh, lot of Capricornian energy. And you've got what I see as Galadriel saying, I'm going to face you off, right? Look at me, the goddess Luna. I will stand here. I, as the protective, nurturing, nourishing aspect of all things. She uh, tore down the walls of Dol Guldor herself, and that's basically what this is. Right? She's standing there and saying, I don't give a fuck how big you are, how, you know, manly Capricorn structured and all of the rest of it. I will show you the light. Yeah, I will show you how to bring all of this down. This is her really doing her thing. And that's that's an interesting segue to make because you know I, I often when I'm when people are asking me to talk about things like magic and energy, and and you know and all of that, I I do make it a point of saying like you do understand that depending on what vibration you are holding your life together with, you know this higher vibration of light, right light of Arendelle, uh, it will go through all of the toxicity and dysfunction that is holding that reality experience together like a bull in a china shop. And the, the truth of the matter is, is that a lot of people, especially again, since about the end of 2015 till now, I think I don't think it's a conscious choice. I don't think anyone would really go like, I want it to be toxic, but I think that on some <laughs> level, we all have our, you know, our, um, our inner codependent, right? The one that's kind of like always bargaining, um, you know, whether it's with nicotine, whether it's with, um, you know, like, uh, Yes, yes, uh, sorry, somebody just wrote here, like Reiki healing, crap gets brought up to be healed before they get better. Absolutely, it comes up to be cleared. You don't shut it down, you don't try and swallow it back down. The, um, the, the thing is, like, I think that people have been kind of in a, in a place where they've been sort of caught up in the shock, awe, and offense mm. of what they are seeing that needs to become up and cleared, but their inner bargainer, again, that inner codependent that I think that we all have, um, that little voice is kind of like, wait, hold on, I have some attachment to this, or this maybe served me once upon a time, or maybe this protected me once upon a time, or this gives me context in a place where I have still not gotten to the space where I am comfortable with ambiguity and the unknown. Now we do need to work on getting comfortable with ambiguity and the unknown, right? The realm of absolutes, black and white duality just does not apply anymore. And if you haven't noticed, anyone who's trying to make it so is uh, kind of bumbling at this yeah. point. Um, it's. Yeah. it's I, I've, I've had to kind of take my leave of a lot of people in my life that I've kind of noticed are sort of, again, very transparently, like their existence is all about manifesting and, and communicating almost entirely in talking points. When you talk about, you know, um, 
you know, uh, whether it's spiritual or non-spiritual, right? It could just be social, it could just be family, it could be political, mm -hmm. it could be whatever. But if you're trying to manifest based on empty talking points, if you're trying to find context into your reality based on empty talking points, it's not coming from your creator spark, it's coming from the mind level. And the mind level doesn't, re uh, doesn't manifest anything at all. Your thoughts do not actually manifest reality. That's like saying a seed is a tree. It's like, no, the seed has the potential to become a tree. It's not a tree all by itself. Just because you have a seed doesn't mean it's a tree that you can go and, you know, sit in the shade in or, or um, you, know, you know, collect your uh, apples from yet. And the, so we have to change how we, how we look at this whole mechanism, how we look at it, and change as well our tools, how we look at it, how our, our familiarity with these things work are. Um, I, I'm finding that a lot of tools that I used to use to mm -hmm. get into the zone, especially, um, again, ones that I was kind of coming into as I was studying a little bit more of what was coming out of that new age stuff, you know, late 2000s, early 20-teens, 2006, 2010, it's not applicable anymore. And yet at the same time, all of the stuff I was working, you know, that I also work with, you know, more of the, you know, uh, yeah. is, is, is really uh, kind of, it's, it's leveled up. And, and um, it's a lot more really hardcore. Glad you mentioned that. You know, uh, very true. And uh, Cindy mentioned about Reiki uh, to to kind of tie that in with that. Um, very much so. I think I got to a point, and it may have been around two thousand and nine, two thousand and ten, where the Reiki symbolism just didn't work for me anymore. I was like, I, I don't need any of that. I'm already connected to whatever the energy is. And you know what, there comes a point, and it might just be for me, I don't, you know, I don't say that this has to be for everybody, but I got to a point where I felt like the system and the symbols and the attunements were actually holding me back. I just wanted to go into that space where I was, you know, free flowing with the energy and working with whatever needed to come through and allowing that process to happen naturally. Well, it's, it's I, I have, um a friend that I work with that, um, you know, he's, he's sort of like, he just kind of helps me ground and, and, and kind of go through, um, you know, some sort of self healing and things like that. And we've been doing a lot of Qigong practices together. And, mm -hmm. but I've also just kind of, you know, come to this understanding. I'm like a lot of these, you know, energy centers and things like that. I'm creating these thought forms before I actually put them to work for myself. You know, it's almost like, okay, I have to go and create the concept to create the conceptual space of whatever energy center this is, yeah. and then apply it to myself, whatever it is. Um, at this point, my, my whole, like the epicenter of, you know, all spiritual anything for me is, well, it's always been the heart and the heart center um, and the higher heart, that's always been my thing. I've always had like this, um, this fixation with, you know, okay, like this, I'm not really like putting energy into my heart. I'm just sort of like burning off the layers of density from the physical all the way back to, you know, the, the that core light and just releasing it. That's been who I, you know, how I've always looked at it since high school. Mm -hmm. And it's weird, I'm just coming right back to that. Um, and I'm also starting to hmm, go ahead. You're having that full circle moment, yeah. you know, for, for you. That's beautiful. It really is. I, you know, it's, I always talk every few years, I always bring this up, but I always think about like, they're like, well, when do you feel like you're always in peak form? You know, as far as your spiritual focus, your mental focus. And I would say, um, 18 year old Nico, uh, I mean, now I'm, I'm definitely, you know, in, in, in a, in a, obviously like smarter, right. Than I was when I was 18. That's not, <laughs> that's a given. Uh, but I mean, I would say 18 year old Nico was probably the least impacted by, um, you know, and the least tainted mm. by, uh, external experience when it comes to really just kind of tapping in, you know, instantaneous and it was just kind of like I'm not trying to go back and reclaim that because I think that trying to go backwards to to reclaim a feeling or an experience a sensation or a state of being in your spiritual progress is only going to again replicate your reality over and over and over again and you don't want to do that so 
you, you want to, okay, I know that was a thing and that was really strong and bright. So I want to get stronger than I was back then. Yeah. I want to get more powerful than I was back then. Ooh. And um, that's, so you change, you know, because yeah. uh, a lot of people, I think sometimes they go and they chase the feelings, and they chase the sensations. Um, it, you know, it's kind of like, oh, I want to feel that connection with deity that I used to feel when I was using whatever system. And it's kind of like, why don't you look for something that's going to take you more intimate than that? Yeah. Why don't you explore what, you know, what is going to take you further? And again, the full circle yet again with the astrology, um, you know, Saturn in Capricorn, Saturn in Capricorn works more on the, what we call an authority in our life. And we have to redefine what we consider to be an authority in our life. And sometimes yeah. a system could be a spiritual system, could be a lexicon, right? Mm -hmm. I've, been hammering on this for ages on both my channels, we have got to become more spiritually fluent in each other's languages. Um, I think that the ideal is, is, you know, instead of, instead of needing to constantly translate what we're talking about, I mean, the only people I really want to work with are people that I could just free fall with, you know, and yeah. he doesn't have to say, he doesn't have to say it in my language and I don't have to say it in his language because the only reason we're speaking verbally is out of habit the mm -hmm. information he and i are exchanging on our pure soul level there's actually a guy that i met uh shout out to you uh hope you and your wife are doing well um that he he and i have uh we, we, we i've been reaching out to a lot of my oversoul group lately and he and i've been chatting this last month um and i've been meeting a whole lot of them so shout out to my whole oversoul oh, oh whole oversoul group there's like five of you that popped up in the last um in, in the last month so shout out to all of you um, you know, there's a guy in SoCal right now. There's a gal out in East Texas right now, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, but the, uh, but as we, you know, we've been Skyping and, and whatnot, and it's been so interesting because we don't speak the same language, mm -hmm. but we understand each other very fluently. And it's so nice to not have to go through that process of okay <laughs> yeah, far, yeah 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 for sure for how, sure how, how far how far can we go and i think that with um saturn in capricorn itself it's sort of challenging us to see okay what do we hold up as a priority you know what do we hold up as a priority here because sometimes we we um we venerate something as an authority for our own protection for our own context and our own structure and that's okay to a certain degree i've got my little things you've got your little things we've all got our little things but as um as karen hey karen uh has has mentioned yeah it's uh it's it, ritual can be a block right? Mm -hmm. Ritual can be a block. I've, and I think that um, for a lot of us with Saturn in Capricorn, even though it's only for, you know, another year or so, because um, there's a retrograde, of course, there's always a retrograde. He'll come back for a sec. Um, but, you know, and, and this, the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction, not just the Jupiter-Pluto, but the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction that happens later in the year, um, at the end of 2020, is, is all about us going, okay, what needs to be downgraded from venerated authority as opposed to, you know, and, 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 and sort, of, sort of understood as a loved and treasured safety blanket. Because um, there's difference. Like when I look at my little things, I go, yeah, you're, you're my blankie. That's cool. <laughs> you're my blankie and I like my blankie and that's perfectly fine. There is nothing wrong with that. But I know it's not the be all end all. I know that not everyone's gonna do this. and I don't need everyone to do this for me to know what they're doing. And, and you know, and I, it's, it, it is what it is. Um, and we also have to look at that in the mundane, right? We also have to look at that in the mundane. Okay, because all of this should be translatable back to the, to the mundane. What is our yeah, plan key? I think, it, well, that's the whole point, isn't it? That's the whole well, principle of... I just felt like I needed to say that, like, just, I don't know, maybe it didn't need to be stated. Obviously, this could be translated to the mundane experience. Um, but it's, 
we need to think about, all right, some, what, you know, we're, it's just a blankie. <laughs> Maybe you put that in parentheses. It's just a blankie. What, um, what, what exactly can you do with not adhering to, even though you might want to keep it around for a little while? you know, over the course of this year. Now, sometimes we are afraid to make a jump. We're afraid to, you know, change to a career that resonates with us better. Maybe we're afraid to um, honor maybe a, a certain type of way that we parent that deviates from maybe the way our parents parented us or their parents parented them. Maybe we're af kind of afraid to, to deviate from the way that we connect, again, to our own spiritual source of power. Maybe we are in a space where we are understanding that, um, and we have to own it, right? Because Saturn and Capricorn, you own what you're doing. You don't yeah. get to pretend uh, that you're not doing what you're doing. You have to own your intention and come to a place of pure intention. Because 2019, that's what pure, it's been all about pure intention. Um, Anything that doesn't really resonate with what you're trying to do has just kind of fallen apart. I think a lot of people that that's happened for, a lot of people that I've spoken to anyway, um, and it's kind of, you know, led to me playing devil's advocate to say, well, actually, how much does that really resonate with where it is that you're going? And what it is that you actually envision, you know, to, to happen from here on in. Well, um, it's like, yeah, it, it's because it, because how do you resonate with something if all you're doing is is trying to manifest with 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 repetitive talking points? Mm. Mm, you know, how, I mean, how I mean, how resonant are you with twin flames and talk and, and lottery tickets if you don't know anything about the mechanism that they? Uh, uh, yeah, I have, sorry, I have yeah. a, I yeah. have a, a bit of a laughing in your face. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, um, I have a bit of a bugbear with that, uh, and the reason being is because it kind of just really took off in a way that I think people forget that we have strong wills, right? Even if you're not necessarily spiritual, even if you're not necessarily on a journey or on a path or anything like that, people have strong wills. And sometimes you can convince yourself that someone is something to you uh, without realizing that actually they just feed into whatever, I'm sorry to say it, um, self-defeating prophecy you're already playing out within yourself and I, and I mean that with all love and all care but some of the things you read online and I'm like okay but can you not see that this is actually not good for you or the other person involved so when you talk about a twin flame I always say like is it a soulmate or a lesson mate you know, is it someone that's here to actually teach you about what you need to evolve in yourself and what they might need to evolve? I think the highest part of that would be able to, would be being able to say to the other, you know what, I don't think it is actually us, but here's what I've learned from you. Here's what I th feel like I've taught you. How can we now kind of go on our separate journeys, but maybe keep each other in our lives? Uh, I think, it, it, you know, it's a, a really slippery slope. We do. We have very strong wills uh, as human beings. And, you know, at base level, we want what we want. Who's to say that that necessarily is then a twin flame? And what does that actually mean to you? Well, I think that, um, I mean, it, to me, a, a twin flame is a status. It's not actually a person. Um, and it's, it's, it's this whole pro I'm actually doing a video on oversoul groups and the concept of twin flames and how it, it's really got nothing to do with, you know, mm -hmm. them or, or, or any, you know, or, or anything like that. It's, it's a completely different thing. Um, and I feel like nowadays, I mean, here's the thing we're, we're still in a space where, yeah, lower beings are lower beings and they're going to be predatory lower beings. And so when that happens, yeah, you've got people who want to talk about, oh, yeah, the, the chasing and running away phase of being in a twin flame relationship. No, that's, that's a parasite. Just walk away. Walk away. Let it go. All right. Um, there's, 
And and then you've also got the the other unfortunate truth. I'm sorry about it. Sorry, you know, you, you call people out. Now I'm going to call people out. We've got a lot of patients posing as practitioners. Oh yeah. Okay, we, we've we, got we've got. That. Yeah, we talked about that in our in our last chat before this, right? You know, it's like you've. It's like, I really loved what you said there as well. I think you brought up a really, really big point um, of this, you know, if the patients are giving the medicine, uh, <laughs> you know, you really need to think about that for, uh, for dosage and, and all the rest of it. You know, there's so many things that kind of spin off from that. I really like that you brought it up because I actually think like, I feel like it's very important. And I think what we're seeing with the astrology is a lot of this stuff is going to break down. And I kind of feel like that's what the whole Jupiterian aspect in Capricorn is about as well. He's kind of coming in to say, well, I'm about truth. And we've already seen a light exposed on all of the shit that's going on that isn't necessarily in the right place or even has a solid foundation. So you know what? I'm going to come in, Jupiter, I'm going to give you a higher perspective and a different understanding, but I'm going to ask you to dedicate yourself to what is actually true for you. What is actually, you know, what is, and not for everybody else, not what's spoon fed to you by the media or what you were told or how it's supposed to be. What is true for you? And how are you going to implement that in your life in a way that is going to make a difference and take you to where you'd actually like to be? Well, and that's, that's the scary thing I think about this. To me, it's a blessing to another person that might in the beginning feel like a curse. You talk about truth. It's a blessing. <laughs> it's a blessing, ultimately. It's a blessing for, and it's, it is in the highest interest of all concerned, but we talk about the highest interest that might not always feel like the most comfortable interest in the beginning. Let's take it back to perceptual veils for a second. And I won't spend here too long because I'm going to make a, another video about veils. So I won't like just try and make this video about veils. Um, but, you know, we're already kind of seeing this transition where people are not able to disguise their energy their, their, or, or what they're holding anymore. Perceptual veils can be, go on a lot of different levels, right? We have visual veils, those are going down. They're, they're sensory veils of a different kind. And the energy that people bring is not as easily masked. Mm -hmm. um, now, people will still resonate with what they resonate with. There are still people in the world, right, who still, um, it's like I, I, we talked about in this chat before. We were I was talking about how, you know, a lot of people nowadays have a very serious narcissist problem. Uh, mm -hmm. Either they are a narcissist and they resonate with narcissists, they want to see them win, or they're, you know, kind of codependently, like they hate narcissists, but they would, they love them at the same time. So they keep them powerful. Um, that type of, you know, there's, there's a lot of that going on. And we talked about a few celebrities, but anyway, um, the, the, the thing is, is that, um, we have this situation where even those veils of like, they're, they're not there anymore. And even the people who are not quote unquote awake, I think everyone to a certain degree is awake at this point in time. It's really just a question of who is or who is not out of bed. Um, the, the, what? No, I, I love that. I, I love it. I really okay. love it. Yeah. You knew I was a bitch when you met me. The <laughs> <laughs> what I love about you. Um, the, I, it, it's the, it's so funny though. You're the grounded one and you're the Aquarius and I'm the Virgo. Oh gosh. No, no, definitely not. I but, think sometimes, yeah. You, you, you. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, that narcissist problem again is, is, is kind of also going away over the course of this next year. It is, it's crumbling, it's coming down. Um, and I think that what's happening is because again, as these veils start to come down, people are becoming aware of their own energy. Imagine being somebody who can feel their own vibration the way other people feel it. Yeah. Oh, scary. You know, not, not scary stuff, but I tell you, one of the trainings that I went through with, uh, I call her my magical mama. Um, Lai DeAngelis, I, I love her and I always will, I cannot tell you how this woman has really shaped my life in so many ways because she was brutal with us. She didn't hold back, it wasn't, I'm not going to coddle you if you want somebody to make this easy and it has to be, you know, that kind of path for you then, you know, kind of look away now. Um, 
she talked about something that she calls malengro. And when I went through the process of trying to separate myself from the things that make that up, it was really uncomfortable. There were moments where I kind of had to really look at myself and say, oh, Raph, that's, that's, dude, like, oh, you're a bit icky in that sector and you need to fix it. You know, I, I'm going to stand here and say I'm a saint and totally pure. No, definitely not. Uh, what I can say is I'm definitely further along the path than I was back then. Um, interesting segue that you made earlier when you said about getting back to that aspect of yourself when you were 18. I kind of feel like the conjunction is going to give us, you know, we always say like, oh, if I knew what if I knew now, or, or right, if I knew then what I know now how I'd be able to approach things would be so different. I kind of feel like we're getting that advancement. It's almost like we're being given uh, foreknowledge, but in the now. Yeah. And that's a big part of the shift. You know, this, this whole thing that you said about taking the veil down, I think that's what the Jupiterian aspect is about as well. What is the higher ideal for this? You know, for, for the structure, for the society, for the way that you insert yourself into the world. What does this actually look like for you now? On, or rather, should I say, on the other side? And I think if you've got that understanding that that old self, that old paradigm of who we are and all the rest of it is gone, who do you create yourself to be now? And what do you do to go about creating it? Um, you know, I, I, I had a person get really kind of, you know, caught up in the duality um, that I was working with, it, it, it's, you know, they're kind of, again, they're still in that sort of um, ultimate evil, ultimate good, you know, again, three, four D kind of perspective. And um, again, there are lower beings out there. Like they're, 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 they're going to go their own way. But um, the, 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 what you have to look at here is, the way to deal with that, if you're dealing with that and you feel like you need to deal with that, you need to start actually over, you know, just creating a different experience like that. And it sounds weird because you're going to be like, well, shouldn't I banish? Shouldn't I clear? Shouldn't I purge? Shouldn't I, you know, wall off? And it's like, look, this isn't, you can continue to do that for as long as that's supported and that will serve you to a certain degree. But you know, in my own space, in my own way of doing things now, I, because I will encounter things like that, you know, so long as I am doing a job and allowing myself to get involved with people and interact, then a choice I have made means on some level I might encounter or invite that experience into my life. That's just comes with being interactive. I would say that to me, the, the plan would be okay, if I'm dealing with that, then that means I have to, again, find and keep working on creating a reality for myself mm -hmm. and holding that vibration, holding that space and only allowing, you know, again, those beings, physical and non-physical, to take part in that reality where anyone or anything that's kind of carrying that sort of warped, or that sort of, again, lower rung kind of energy form within themselves, they're, they're just ineligible to even take part in that reality. You know, mm -hmm. forget about trying to, uh, and, that, and, and I'm not saying that to be, to be mean, that is also a, a way to help people learn. Like, look, what you are bringing to the table, you want the light, and yet the light is, is kind of, rejecting something that again is disharmonious about this action or this something that you're trying to smuggle in that doesn't yes, have you are trying to smuggle in and it's sort of like okay no create a space that you know that toxicity that um that yeah that that discordant um or violent or toxic or dysfunctional behavior, vibration, lifestyle, it's not even permitted to exist. You know, it would burn up on entry. That's really the plan. Um, and the practical steps come in. Yeah. You know, of how to work with Saturn and Pluto practically. Um, and it's, this kind of goes back to something that we talked about before. You remember um, 
one thing that I really like that you said is don't come to it with your hand open. That was the problem with Jupiter in Sagittarius. Everybody just heard all oh, blessings, abundance, growth, and just kind of went, okay, so it's going to rain blessings from the sky. Well, what are you doing to ensure that whatever opportunities come to you can blossom into whatever you would like? What is it that you're bringing to that transit that is going to activate it for you? Right. I mean, I wasted the first half of my Jupiter in the third house. <laughs> I mean, it's, well, seriously, how many, how many, um, how many collaborations have I done this year? No, not zero, but, you know, very, very little, very, very little. One, you know, um, now one of the benefits of having an intercepted fourth house is I've got a little bit more time, <laughs> but the, but it's, again, I did not participate in that experience. Now I chose not to participate in that experience. Again, fully informed that Jupiter wasn't just going to, again, bulldoze my space with whatever, right? This is a free will journey. Um, mm. But yeah, I, I didn't exactly take full advantage of the first half of this transit in my third house, right? Which is all about collaboration, communications, your peer group. I spent a lot of this time sort of working on maybe some of the tech side of things. I've made some choices like merging my channels together gradually, uh, doing all kinds of little bits and bobs there. But, um, you know, I, I haven't necessarily even really begun to do Jupiter in the third. Jupiter's going to be wild in because Jupiter's ruler of, you know, is a Sagittarius. That's the natural ninth house. Jupiter's going to be wild in Capricorn. I'm almost worried about what can, you know, I mean, if you're already sensitive and you're already active, you can feel people's energy di digitally, right? Mm. Who has not read an email or, or oh, yeah. a, a Facebook yeah, message and you can just and feel, what, feel what it's like inside somebody's house. You can feel that vibration in the text of their blog. Now imagine everyone being able to do that. You know, it's, it's not bad. It's just what it is. This is how, because to me, when I think of Saturn and I think of Pluto, I think of, look, in the, again, highest interest of all concerned, it must be done. It mm -hmm. must be done. In the highest interest of all concerned, it, you know, this must be done. No more handholding. No more, um, you know, no, we're, we're going to do this as mercifully and with as much empathy as possible. But again, we also have to, you know, move on with this shift, feeling, everyone feeling each other's energy, you know, again, you feeling the vibration that you give off to the world. Mm -hmm. Can and you know imagine? You have to check yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've actually not necessarily, I've always paid attention to what my reality is, uh, you know, what, what could happen? Now, I, of course, I let myself feel things. I'm not talking about trying to be happy, smiley, you know, unicorn stickers and candy all the time. Because you can channel any kind of energetic spike, whether it be coming from, you know, um, a certain type of emotional state or another into something that is appropriate. You yeah. don't have to suppress. You should not suppress, but be careful how you process as well. Because I think a lot of people get stuck in a loop, okay? Processing, emotional processing, relationship processing and things like that, that's important, but do it in the right space and do it with a sense of responsibility. Processing is about getting through it, not perpetuating yeah. it. Okay? Which is why the conjunction as well. I don't like, it's not, don't let anybody fear monger to you. Don't let anybody convince you that the sky is falling in. It's not, it's just that things are really changing. They really are going to evolve and you're going to have to ride with it. Um, it's more like that's, dissolving. Yeah, actually, that, that's a, yeah, that's a- The sky is dissolving. <laughs> <laughs> the sky is dissolving. The, the, the 3D projection structure is dissolving. Is, uh, you know, those uh, boundaries and limitations are coming down. Yeah. You know, like the same with the thing with the veil. Um, so, uh, what else do you want to kind of segue into? Well, we're coming up on our two hours here, and I know that there are a lot of folks who want to do a Q&A, 
Uh, they came for a Q&A. We're going to give them a Q&A. So you're going to hear some clicking. Um, thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this chat. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I've got my phone. I've got my uh, Facebook, uh, my Scarlet Moon Facebook open. Uh, and if you want to private message me or you want to just post in the chat bar below, please go right ahead. Um, you know, you can also, again, send me a private message on the uh, at Scarlet Moon Nico Instagram. And uh, we can, you know, we can do it to it. Uh, but yeah, now it's time to kind of have at it. And we shall see what is what is on uh, the, you know, what is on for you. Okay. Was just... Are we switching the recording off for the Q&A? Mm. Or are people okay with their questions being... We... Well, let's see here. I've got some people messaging privately and some people messaging uh, and, and just posting in public. I mean, I personally, I just record, you know? Okay. Um, and I think that that might be, you know, okay. Uh, if you guys don't want me or uh, Raphael to say or do anything um, regarding your name or uh, again you don't want this answered on video then you might want to not message through the zoom group chat maybe you want to message through uh, to us either on again Facebook we both have also Instagram um, there's a radiant reality at Instagram as well as a Scarlet Moon Instagram so if you want to do a private message that way instead as well Okay, but um, yeah, we, you know, this, I think that this, uh, that, that a live Q&A could still be helpful because, you know, if people are going to be asking about, you know, well, you know, like this person here is asking about their second house. Another person might want to know about their second house. So okay. that's yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's cool. That works. Yeah. Um, so let's, uh, let's scroll a little bit. Uh, those of you who have written privately already, I will just respond in type, if, you know, um, but again, remember, if you, if you write privately to me, it's not going to go to Raphael. So if you want to write, write Raphael privately, you've got to write Raphael privately, okay? Because we're not sharing the same inbox on this one here. So, and Rambo is just clawing up my new bear, <laughs> my big baby bear. Yeah. Oh, big whale of a cat. All right. So let's, uh, let's have a look and see uh, at public uh, talks first. Okay. So... Um, and again, please specify if you wish to remain anonymous. Yeah. All right. Um, or should we just, or would you feel comfortable just leaving everyone anonymous for this one? Normally I don't, but then again, I'm also not putting my stuff on YouTube. Yeah, okay. I'll anonymous it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. so Capricorn in, is in the second house. How do you see that going? I mean, if it's a grand rewrite in and of itself, that really is, a, you know, your second house isn't necessarily just about work or the money that you earn from that. It's about your self-esteem. It's about your self-worth, what you really value. Um, and that's really shifting in a big way. This really does, for me, feels like you're going to start to look for maybe more spiritual ways to earn your money, maybe to incorporate that more into your life space. Uh, and also, I mean, I've always believed that how much money you can earn, what you can generate in terms of materials, is a reflection of how you feel about yourself. The two are quite closely linked. And I feel like for the second house, if you've got Pluto there, this is really shaking things up to, for you to ask you, what is it there that really needs to change on an internal level that may be a piece of script that's coming from someone or somewhere else? And then Saturn's asking you to change that or to rewrite it, to build a new structure around that. I would say, yeah, there's, there's something more focusing on, um, it, it's just as far as what I'm getting. I mean, I don't see like this being somehow cataclysmic for your employment um, personally, uh, mm -hmm. individual I am talking to. Uh, but I do think that this may be a time where you see uh, a major transition in how, um, and again, very much, I think we're going to see this a lot also in the political sphere, but also within your workspace, uh, how certain, th you know, how certain um, structures are, are governing your space of employment. Um, there may be a new way that you organize uh, or, or the company organizes their board of directors. Uh, you might see an, 
figure, a boss, a manager, supervisor, even an executive, um, step down or away. There could be an acquisition. There could be something that goes on that uh, ultimately at the end of the day is, again, it's in the best interest of all concerned. Saturn and Pluto are not, you know, just bastards, right? They, they are here to make a difference. And I think that um, it, it might be an unpleasant uh, growing pain over the course of the year, right? We have retrogrades to account for as well. This conjunction peaks a couple of times. I mean, it starts, you know, in early 2020, but it, it, it kind of boom, boom, boom all the way through December. And, you know, you might be finding that where whatever organization you're in, um, th th this could be something that actually ends up, uh, you know, kind of being run a completely different way. You know, you, you might even see how the business is licensed, mm -hmm. right? Completely change. Um, you know, if somebody, you know, one minute they're, they're uh, one, one minute it's an S corp and the next it's a social enterprise, like you don't know. All right, this is kind of how these identities might shift, these governing strategies might shift for, for them. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll jump on the next also see you being thrust into that place of responsibility in some way, shape or form as well, because it's your second house. Yeah. So there might be some sort of driving force that kind of says, well, whether you want the responsibility or not, you know, some of it is kind of diverted to yeah. you or placed on you. Um, um, let's see here. All right. Uh, do, do, do. How much does Rambo weigh? A lot. Um, yeah. And again, any anyone who writes to me privately, it's it's going to be it's going to be private. So um, and and the same goes for anyone else. Um, so so how much does Rambo weigh? A lot. Rambo um, has gotten a little bigger just in this last year. Um, he is a he's a little bit of an older cat though. He's um, He's just over 12. Wow. And yeah, he's, um, so he's got, uh, I mean, we're trying to keep an eye on it. We've got him off of, um, he doesn't eat, you know, like grains and things like that. It's just strictly all meat. Um, but he's got, you know, it's, he's starting to see some joint issues and things like that show, so, show up. So it's a little bit, you know, the exercise is just not happening as much as it, as it could, um, which is too bad. Uh, but yeah, he's, uh, he weighs a lot. <laughs> I, I haven't weighed him in a while, but he is a heavy boy. Um, I just don't want to say the wrong number. <laughs> um, okay, so next person. I'm a Capricorn sun and moon in Aquarius with Scorpio rising. What's coming up for me? Um, to be fair, without knowing like what the cusp of... Capricorn is in your chart, it's really hard for us to just kind of like do a responsible like prediction for what's coming up for you. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't mean to say that in a bad way. I'm not trying to like cop out here, but the um, each of our degrees, you know, each of our measurements of our housing structures are different. Uh, for instance, um, in my chart, I'm, I'm a Libra ascendant, mm -hmm. but it's 21 degrees Libra. Okay. And so... So I'm, a lot of my first house is still activate, is still impacted by, by Scorpio energy, um, you know? And so it's, you, I'm not sure where like certain houses in your chart start. So, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't want to assume I know if that makes sense, um, especially when it comes to that. I mean, if we're going based on the Scorpio ascendant itself, you might have a lot of the same stuff as me. Uh, we, you know, it does look like uh, for a lot of Scorpio people, there are going to be a lot of collaborations, a lot of new groups, a lot of new peer groups, getting together with, um, you know, doing a big clearing of social affiliations, um, but also at the same time, kind of getting into more complementary teams, complementary communities, complementary companionship, and not just like for the sense of belonging or something like that. Like this is actually with purpose. And I feel like there's a big push for that, um, you know, kind of getting with contemporaries uh, for a lot of Scorpio people, contemporaries with your craft. Um, mm. what, you know, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a lot more I could say, but again, I don't want to just create expectations without knowing what degree Capricorn or, or Scorpio are actually like doing there, if that makes sense. 
Um, we've got if the exact conjunction on January the 12th happens on the cusp of two houses in my fourth and fifth, should we be looking at the impact of both houses involved? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, because it's kind of, if it's on that point, then you've got that dual aspect energy, for sure. I think you should definitely look at it. Um, I think is one of the things as well, if you're looking at, you know, as it's passing through the fourth, what has it kind of set in that place or set in motion in that place? And then as it moves into the fifth, um, what is it trying to bring in? You know, think of it as the one thing in the fourth, let's say, is kind of closing down. And as the fifth is coming in, that energy is now starting up. Right. Um, you know, this, that's probably as much as I could say about that, really. Yeah, it, it, it kind of does show this sort of like responding to the, the need of, of, it's almost like the needs of the five must be accommodated by something transitioning in the fourth. So, you know, it's like, oh, we moved to an, a bigger space because we just had a child, right? Fifth house, fourth house, we moved to a new house because we want to have another child. Um, or a, a new love relationship, um, you know, changes the dynamics of a certain household. Uh, there's, there's a lot that can happen there. Um, we might actually decide uh, to uh, change maybe a dynamic with a parent going in the reverse direction with you being the child of the fifth house and the parent being, yeah. you know, in yeah, the fourth. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of, of flipping back and forth, if that makes sense. Um, okay. But, all right. Um, have either of you felt like there was an energy working against you and not found that it was a negative story and have not and not found that it was a negative story you were telling about yourself. If so, what did you do about it? Um, hold on. Okay, so have either of you ever felt like there was a negative, uh, sorry, an energy working against you, and not found it was a negative story you were telling yourself? Uh, yes, I I think that. I, I and it's not really like about how do I phrase it. I know why people say it's a negative story you tell about yourself because that's that's a good way to say that's a very diplomatic way to say something about you is resonating with this experience and that doesn't sound as victim blamey as you know hey look there's something in you that's still resonating with this person or resonating with this problem and that's why it's showing up against you um in this case in the story that i'm thinking of uh, for myself, it did have to do with uh, another person, somebody I was actually, um, there was a lot of resistance uh, in this interaction. And it had to do with this person um, sort of really being, the, the, what, what, what connected this person to me um, or what, we, what resonated us uh, goes on sort of like a familial karmic, it's, it was a family member, I'll just put it that way. Um, and so there's a lot of energy, a lot of interlock going on there. And it made me had to, I had to confront um, certain types of control issues that I had because I had started to really feel this person's control issues, but also at the same time, what this person's issue was, was a lot stronger in the way that they did it. Like for me, um, it felt like a resistance because I didn't know why this person was resistant until I found out that this person um, was just terrified of change. Horrified, mm. horrified, very easily destabilized by um, an alteration, you know, uh, in, in their routine. Um, in, in, long story short, this person felt ultimately abandoned by um, every friend, every girlfriend, and every relative they ever had that actually grew up. And um, that showed up in my life as a lesson and not as a negative story I was telling myself, but a control issue that I had, which had to do with keeping, I guess you could say my youthful self mm. in a prison while I had my external, you know, pretense and concealment to being this wise adult uh, running the show. And all the while, I saw this equal opposite going on. A 30-year-old child mm. trying to freeze time around himself and 
ultimately creating this, you know, this, this very toxic and, and very restrictive energetic space around them that sort of stopped a lot of people from being able to do anything with him, um, you know, and, and relate to him and, and stay close to him. You know, it was very hard. I mean, I, I can't, it's very hard for a person to be in a relationship with somebody like that. So a lot of, you know, the, the, these women left him, um, uh, you know, because it's like at some point, you know, they're going to want to grow and, and have a life. And for me, I had to stop and go, okay, what am I trying to preserve? Yeah. It's a lesson about preservation. It's a lesson about, look, it's okay to embrace and integrate that younger part of yourself, that, 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 that inner child self. But again, make sure that you do it in a way where you are honoring the, both the adult and child experience, right? So we had me, the one who was sort of like the adult man, super adult man, right? Perfect <laughs> specimen. Mm -hmm. uh, hardly but compared to him i was the universe is really funny like that compared to anyone else absolutely not and then we had him which was kind of like this whole why does everyone have to grow up and leave me i'm just going to freeze time and so his energy and my energy did very much clash right because his created a lot of blocks because he wants no development nobody grows anymore nobody grows up nobody goes away nobody deviates from their plan nobody deviates from their script for me yeah. it was um i know the best way to do this i know the best way i know the most healthy way i know the perfect way for everyone i know the straight and narrow path everyone do what i do and so it was kind of like wow in a weird way those are both kind of the same story mm -hmm. they're both the same story two immature energy forms thinking they're better than the other. Wow. Wow. And it wasn't a story necessarily that I was telling myself that was a delusion. I believed in a monster and the universe made me a monster. That's really deep. Yeah. I think, um, yeah. Um, Okay, so Pupak has a, I'm a Virgo, if not sure about rising run, but you are on the cusp with Leo, should I look at your channel for some reason, I feel like Scorpio Virgo. Um, to be honest with you, you'd probably go through the process of chart rectification, and I have to be honest, if you're going to find... Uh, I don't personally believe that I possess the skill for it at this moment in time. So when it comes to chart rectification, I would find somebody, if not the man himself, um, to, <laughs> you know. I, I was just saying, no, I can't do it either. Yeah, I would find somebody that's got the, um, the experience that you would need to do that and to do it properly. And I never want to do, I had this come up actually not too long ago. Um, somebody wanted a, an Astro Mandala, I think it was an Astro Mandala reading, one of those. Um, and I just said, look, I, I can't do it. I sat and I tried to do it, but then I thought, no, do you know what? I don't ever want to try anything. I want to do what I know and I want to be able to, I've got to stay in my integrity. Yes. So you know what? I'm going to pass you over to somebody that's actually going to give you what it is that you need at this moment in time. So uh, I'm sorry if that doesn't answer your question, but it's about as close as I can get to it. Um, one of the things I, I will say, though, on the topic of the search for the ascendant, and I understand that mm -hmm. it is very difficult to find birth times, uh, especially um, if you are born prior to 1970 in the States. Um, or at most... all in the UK. <laughs> what? Or at all in the UK. We don't put times. Really? Oh. Nope. No. Some... I have tons of British clients. They all have their times. Okay, well, maybe they don't maybe that's come from the parents who have written it on there or something. But oh, maybe yeah. birth certificates. No, we don't have them. Okay, yeah, because in, well, in the U.S., like it became standard practice um, in the '70s, but not all states mm. really started getting on board until the late '70s. So it was sort of like this incremental process. Um, but I will say, you know. I've done readings for people who've claimed to not know their birth time, but in actuality, they were prematurely dismissing um, 
what their what knowledge they already had. For instance, okay, your ascendant, you can still get a pretty accurate, um, you know, ascendant or, or find the ascendant. Um, I'm just going to do this video here. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I missed one. <laughs> Whoops. Take care of that, Raphael. You're the host. Uh, <laughs> come on, you're the boss. Uh, the uh, <laughs> uh, hi, uh, we're just gonna turn off that video. I'm sorry. We're we're there. You go. Yeah, I, I apologize again. We 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 did we were trying to keep the video control kind of tight. I apologize to everybody. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, this this is a special occasion. It's a different occasion here. But the um, what I was gonna say was, if you can get your time down to within 30 minutes mm -hmm. approximation give or take it's still going to be accurate for you we might still have some measurement issues as far as very specific orbs for cusps and things like that but it's still going to get closer to your actual you know the actual truth of your chart so um i had a client who was like well i don't know what my birth time is and i said okay well you know mm -hmm. and you know and then she was basically saying she said well my you know my mother says it was sometimes sometime between you know, 9.15 in the morning, 9.45 in the morning. I'm like, we can work with that. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. We can work with that. It's only when it gets to like really long spans of time. Oh, you know, I had a person. Stuff. Yeah, yeah I, I, I had a person, actually funny, she was, a, she, she was an English client and she was like, I don't know, my mom says it was sometime between one and four. And it's like, oh, unfortunately that is a bit too wide. That is a bit too wide an aspect, uh, wide, wide a time frame. But with the, within 30 minutes, you know, you, you actually do have something you can work with. So, you know, just, just something there. Um, let's see here. Uh, okay. Uh, wow, thank you. It's been something similar to my end as well. I feel I need to separate from this person. Oh, this is referring to the story. Um, uh, but if I do, I fear that they won't be able to take care of themselves, aging parent. Maybe the lesson is to learn to live in peace with our differing values through me letting go and being flexible. That is up to you. Um, you know, I, I think that if they need you for care, right, then, and, and you are the only one who can take care of them, and you choose to take this on for yourself, which is very noble, then you still need to know how to do boundaries. Yes. Um, you still need to know how to do um you know, you, you still need to have a space that is not going to get contaminated with vibrations that you don't want to hold. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that is, you know, if you're having a tough time to the point where it feels like there's something working against you and it's holding up your life, right? You need to find a way to, again, first, we're going to take care of that, right? We, we, we're going to purge that, that lower, dense, again, self-replicating reality from ourselves and then we're gonna hold that sacred space for ourselves. Now, if you're in a situation where you just don't have any sacred space, um, I mean, I'm assuming you don't share a bedroom with this parent, you know, mm -hmm. find a way to, to kind of set some, some spiritual boundaries. So try to find a way to actually climatize the space, right? And we can do it in a way where it's not, you know, cause again, we're not, cursing people we're not psychically attacking them we're not scourging them you know with with fire and flame and you know and and and, and, and punishing them for existing but we are going look the 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 lower you know more negative and unsavory energies that you just insist on you know billowing out into the atmosphere are going to dissolve they're not permitted to substantiate into an unpleasant reality and, mm -hmm. you know, for me anyway, like if you want to recreate that kind of experience for yourself until you learn your lesson, so be it. But, yeah, it's, sorry, just, <laughs> um, know. yeah, sorry, just to add to that as well. I mean, I get it as well. If it's an aging parent, there is obviously that, you know, there's, there's a lot of feelings tied up in that. And I think when people reach the winter of their lives, they're ready to start phasing a lot of things out. Have you maybe thought about asking if there are conversations that you can have that will, you know, that will assist 
letting them, uh, you know, know that there are certain things that kind of need to, to be phased out or to be let go of. Um, you know, because it will make them lighter in and of themselves. And I don't mean in terms of light and dark. I mean, just lighter in terms of releasing some of the baggage. You know, if you've got that stuff between you, I'm not saying because sometimes you can't. And I get this from your situation, Nico, like you weren't in a space where you could have the dialogue. Do you know what I mean? It's sometimes it really just isn't possible. But if you can, you could really help that person. Um, yeah if you if you could if you, if you can have the conversation and open up the dialogue you could really help them along the path of the you know in the place that they're in and you yourself would go through the process of feeling something cathartic from it as well um so yeah I, 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 yeah sorry i'm doing tech support in the no no <laughs> i apologize that's not that's not no, 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 no. So, so obviously, question on that is all affecting my life. Um, Craig, read the next one. I'll, I'll jump in. Okay. So, both mother and grandmother believe that if you break a mirror, it was a sign that you would have seven years bad luck. Are you familiar with this superstition? And do you know how to break this negative spell? Um, I mean, <sighs> That's an interesting one. I, one thing that one of my old mentors said to me that really struck a chord with me was, um, what's on the other side of a mirror? And I was like, okay, so I was only like 15 at the time. So you can imagine my mind was like coming up with all of this crap. Um, and a, a part of it was, um, you know, I thought, I thought about it. And then she said, the un, on, the other, on the other side of the mirror is uh, eternity. And I puzzled over that for a while because it was like, okay, where is she going with that? Uh, superstitions, just like anything, have uh, a lot of weight when you give them weight. Uh, this kind of feeds into the whole th Friday the 13th idea. If you're really convincing yourself that today everything's going to go wrong and as soon as I step out the door, I'm going to trip on this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to miss my, you know, all of the rest of it. Uh, you are a very, very powerful conduit for the things that happen around you. Um, so, yeah, I guess it kind of comes down to where you, you personally believe that. And to, to quote Sally Owens, um, it has power because you believe it does. So it's kind of up to you. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a, <laughs> yeah. I, I think that maybe it would also do do some good to just sort of contemplate what the anatomy of a spell is. It's just energy. It's just information. Mm. We clear information and energy from our fields all the time. There is no difference between a spell that lasts for a day and a spell that lasts for seven years. There is no such thing as no matter what. There is no such thing as no matter what I do. Because, again, that is just information. What ultimately supersedes anything is the fact that something comes and essentially will override it, right? So that's what a clearing is. That's what an uncrossing is. That's what a purification is. That's, that's why we do it. You know, if you're worried about a mirror giving you seven years of bad luck, I mean, what are you going to do when, you know, when you, you have to clear, you know, um, there might be a two year bad trend, the difficult weather transit, difficult energy transit, right? Those of us 1985 kids uh, just had Saturn transiting our natal Neptune in the last couple of years. And for those of you who don't know anything about that transit, it's shit. And the thing is, is that, um, you know, what you got to do is no, okay, I have to, again, understand that I am all that I am, and what part of that is, is ultimate divine creator source, right, that spark in the heart. Mm -hmm. um, that energy might be coming at me, that energy might be being carried by other people, that might be coming out of a cursed mirror, that might be coming out of a planet, that might be coming out of whatever. I hold a vibration that is uncomplimentary to that experience. And so does my space, and so does my heart, and so does my will. And it will burn up. You create a space within yourself and your entire live stream that does not permit that shit to exist. 
and you've just learned how to break every spell and every curse. On average, how will this play out on the world stage for many awakening in 2020? Um, in, in what way? Just as we said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I, I kind of feel like we've been, we've been talking about how do you change a belief uh, by choice? You know, I, don't get me wrong. Practice. Faith, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. But uh, by choice, by exercising your your ability to choose consistently, because a belief is something that you you hold, or rather that you feed your faith into eventually, right? That's where the two kind of connect up some way. Uh, it's or just you use or or give yourself a bit of a, a a bit of an opportunity to silence the mind of that of that of that of that overthinking chatter, mm -hmm. you know in a world of limitless possibilities and an ultimate infinite creator source that you are ultimately connected to and have access to at all times, how could there be a limitation such as a fixed belief or a hard and fast rule? Mm. And work that out. Because ultimately a belief is a coping mechanism. At the end of the day, it is a coping mechanism. I believe that I will do better Maybe I will because I believe so, or maybe I will because for the time being it's true. Working with a certain type of crystal or herb to get closer to the vibration of the experience I want to have. Okay, true. However, I am also working on my due diligence to be able to do such without need of external tools, cues, and uh, cues tools, cues, and augmentations. So it's a transition from a belief. Yeah. I would probably yeah. say that more than a change because changing yeah. your belief, we don't want to just go from one radical idea to re-radicalize into another belief. That's how people bounce around religions. It's not about that. It's about getting into a space where it's like, look, I understand that boundlessness means boundlessness mm -hmm. and that belief might be an emotional attachment to a rule or a boundary or some kind of structure that once gave me context into my reality that is no longer applicable to my highest outcome. Ooh, like that, like that a lot. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I actually, what I said was, I was actually a little bit limited and, and what I, I didn't mean to be insensitive. It's not so much just, you know, just change your mind. It wasn't about that. It's more, you know, for me, it is about choice. You choose to believe something so you can choose not to believe it, or you can choose to work within um, within the energy of that belief. Like, you, you know, I, I really like what you said because it opens it up. Um, your you know, beliefs are just your rules. At the end of the day, your beliefs are your rules for how your energy field and everything that you touch and influence functions. Mm -hmm. You have to decide what kind of God are you. Mm -hmm. Everyone is sacred to something, and we all dwell in sacred spaces. But there are gods of filth and decay, and there are gods of beauty and love. And creation. Are, what are your beliefs sacred to? Mm. And what, are, what are you? What is your space? What is the energy you hold? What is sacred? What, what are you making sacred is the question. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not about changing beliefs um, in terms of like, okay, I've got some societal conditioning or community conditioning or, or religious conditioning. That's something else. Like at, at some point, okay, um, you, you're going to get to a place if you are doing your due diligence, working with your energy, meditating, working on confronting the unconscious and making it conscious. At, at that point, you're going to burn up enough of that density to the point where it's kind of like, yeah, there's no way, mm -hmm. you know? All right, next one. Uh, how can you forgive? Mm. I think, first of all, you need to ask yourself if you're able. 
not just whether you should, you need to ask yourself if you're actually able to do that, you know, uh, and it's because, you know, they say forgive and forget. My motto has always been, I'll happily forgive you, but I'll never forget because it leaves me susceptible for the next time you decide to fuck up. No, thank you. Uh, <laughs> That's just me personally, it doesn't necessarily have to be for everybody. Um, but yeah, you need to ask yourself, do you truly have the capacity to forgive whatever it is that needs to be forgiven in your eyes or in somebody else's eyes? Um, I think that that's probably for me, that would be the best place for you to start. Ask yourself if you're able uh, and be real and be honest about it. If you can, great. If you can't, say so. Let your yes mean yes and your no mean no. And be okay with that. I think a form, uh, to, to myself when it comes to how do you forgive, um, I don't consider it always forgiveness. I call it a discharge um, from my life. Now, I guess on some level you can call it a forgiveness. But our simple definition of forgiveness is not really what forgiveness is. It's not about, if you're, if you're forgiving with the intent of getting back together or patching up or kissing to make up with this person, then just work on kissing and making up. I will never wait on bated breath for somebody to give me an apology or mm -hmm. to make me feel better. I do not let my healing, my catharsis, my evolution, or my, my empowerment depend on another person's validation or legitimization anymore. I used to. I used to a lot. Um, but for me, it became also understanding, okay, um, am I going to let this person's level, wherever they are in their development, dictate how far I can go? Mm -hmm. Really? Is that my decision? No, I'm just going to discharge them from my life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forgive them. Look, you don't owe me anything. I'm going to write off your debt. I'm going to surrender that debt to the universe because the universe is going to pay that debt anyway. I don't need you to apologize for me. It doesn't mean anything special if you do. And take a good hard look at what you're trying to get forgiveness for. Is that person even capable, again, at their level? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes there, it's, it's not even about whether or not they want to. I don't even take it personally. I'm like, you have a severe limitation to understanding what is going on in this experience. Um, I'm not going to slow down for you. I will not hold conceptual space for you any longer in my energy field or in my reality. If you will go down with the ship that was that experience, then so be it, but I will not. I will get, you know, I will write off your debt because quite frankly, I've got more important things to do. Do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Again, mm -hmm. uh, do you believe they get their karma? At, at this point, I'm not even in, invested in whether or not they get their comeuppance. I, I just don't care. They're not a part of my reality. Again, you need to stop looking for emotional catharsis from a point of looking for a very specific kind of resolution and, and closure. Because mm -hmm. sometimes we don't always get closure and resolution the way we think. You know, yeah. we're programmed to look for it that yeah. way. You know, thanks to, you know, Disney. Um, <laughs> you know, or uh, we, we, we kind of expect, um, we, 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 we don't want to create a thought form for this person in our minds. They're taking up space. Going back again and like, oh, I need to go back and do this. So oh, I got to make sure this person gets punished. Oh, I got to make sure I get my revenge. Yeah, no, have it done, really. You know, just I mean, it's... Have it done. Unless you're going to have... I mean, I, I think that um, you've already given them so much time and space. You're, you're, you're letting them stay in your house for free. You're letting them manifest in your life. You're letting them control outcomes. You're letting them, no, stop, let it go. And I'm not saying let it go as in let, oh, let go of the infraction. No, we have to work on healing that. We absolutely do. But for me, if you can't use terms like, like, like forgive because it carries too much of a connotation of a, it's okay, I forgive the action, it's okay. When I say discharge, do you not hear the tone of rejection that comes from me when I say that? I reject that person from my universe. 
I reject that experience from my universe. I write it off. I am not that when I when I say that I go, look, it's not even in my interest to heal, wake you up or make sure you get where I are, where I am. Yeah. That's how I look at it. Yeah. Yeah. I think this comes done. Well, yeah, one of the things I like I love uh, what we do in terms of the YouTube and stuff. It's it's beautiful, it's a wonderful platform but not seeing those people as responsible for you as well, you know, and this comes back to, to that as well. Like what you were saying really struck a chord with me there because I feel like that's a big part of it as well. What will you assume responsibility for and what will you not? You know, that's, that's a, a part of it as well. Okay. I am. Probably uh, knackered. It's 10 to midnight for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been amazing. I truly, truly hope uh, that you at some point would like to work with me again. Um, it's been awesome. Thank you. I would love to. I, I've got some stuff to share with you offline. Um, I think that the, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the Scarlet Moon UK relations is like just so much stronger. Like, um, like in the last couple of weeks, you have no idea. Like stuff that we've been talking about and stuff that I've been talking about with a couple of my other friends uh, mm. out your way. It's just kind of crazy. Um, so for those of you who've been waiting for me to come back to the UK, uh, might happen and might be for a very long time. <laughs> so yeah. um, <laughs> well, with that, that, uh, that uh, fourth house stuff is about to start gearing up for you, isn't that it? That lunar so. eclipse in, in January? It's in my ninth. <laughs> travel baby travel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank um, you so much it's been an absolute pleasure no um, absolutely no this has been we, we we need to do this again absolutely and again um for those of you who are writing uh private messages on um again on on facebook or instagram uh and want questions answered uh privately i will be uh you know writing back to you here uh within the next half hour i need to step out and of course feed my babies but um i, I was gonna say uh, if you i mean you're always welcome on you know on a scar on a, on a q a i think it would be great to just kind of go on maybe one of these days we'll just go on youtube youtube and yeah, yeah, yeah. What happens? You know? <laughs> That'd be, um, cool. be fun. Uh, right. But yeah, no, thank you so much for, for hanging out, Raf, because I love you and I think this is going to be uh, a yeah. great time. I was quest I had a question. I had a question. Yeah, um, yeah. Is your spouse also a practitioner? No, my, no? my damn bear is not. Um, oh. He's, yeah, he's he's definitely got the. I say this, he's got the gift, um, but through a whole bunch of history and stuff, it was very suppressed for him. Um, uh, now, as time goes forward, you know, with the union of us, um, it started to come out. And, and in really amazing and very surprising ways for both of us, it's reminded me very often of, of and I don't say this, you know, from my ego, but reminded me of how much I've actually digested over the years that I can yeah. actually impart to somebody else. And for him, it's kind of, it's really nice to see it just awaken, you know, like it's this. It's, it's happening faster for everybody. So much faster. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you all. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. As the saying goes, you know, much, much appreciated. I'm always very humbled that people resonate with what we do, uh, especially with, with what I do. I can't speak for yourself, obviously. But, um, I don't yeah. care. No, of course I'm, I'm humbled. <laughs> of course I'm humbled. No, yeah. I'm gosh. no, of course I do. Of course I do. And I thank everyone all the time, especially the ones who are super patient with my lack of punctuality. In fact, if you weren't here, this wouldn't have happened on time. It's just <laughs> uh, Thank you so much. Uh, take care. And, uh, I'll speak to you soon. You too.